Well, welcome back to my Commodore 64 Games Memories video series. This is where I look at old games and some of the technical details behind them. Today we have a very quick source code demo for 10 sprites in the border, 10 high res sprites in the border with source code. So if we have a look at this, we can see that there are 10 sprites and they all look like they're high res and they're gonna move around just to make sure that you can understand that they're sprites that move in the border. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. Let's start this again. We can see this is the standard vice emulator. There's the border. So these updating characters are actually in the top left hand corner of the screen. And then we have this little in the monitor debug view, we can see, look, there's just a bunch of bees up in the top left hand corner of the screen. So we know that those are characters. We can see down at the bottom the um, the simpler sprites. So that's multicolor sprites down at the bottom with high resolution sprites. Let's turn on the debug borders. Let's expand it out a little bit. So we can see actually that the top, that the borders, the vertical borders, the top and bottom borders, have been disabled. We've got these expanded multicolored sprites down at the bottom, along with uh, six other high resolution sprites moving around. But the multicolored expanded sprites up in the top border, which is a duplicate of the sprites down in the bottom border, uh, they have these yellow high resolution corners, which match the high resolution sprites with those smooth pixel corners. It matches this sprite definition here that you can see in the source code. Let's open this up in C64 debug GUI. Now, if you've watched my previous videos on the nine demo, which displays apparently displays nine high resolution sprites, then you'll know that it's going to be using a ghost byte trick. But I wrote this demo and I'm including the source code just to uh, give a good worked example of a simpler demo with the color changes removed and everything like that, just so we can see what's happening. So we can see when we expand the screen in C64 debug GUI that the yellow pixels are high resolution and the, the gray and the gray pixels and the light red pixels for those expanded multicolored sprites um, are being augmented by or improved by the high resolution yellow pixels. Now, the thing is, is that where do these high resolution yellow pixels come from? And again, if you watched my previous couple of videos, then you'll probably already guess that those high resolution colored pixels come from uh, the background color. But what does this demo do? Well, first of all, this demo waits for raster position F8 and once we reach raster position F8, it changes the screen height from 25 characters to 24 characters. It switches it from 25 row mode to 24 row mode, basically, at this particular Y position in the screen raster line schedule. And what this does is that it begins the process of fooling the VIC chip into when it needs to toggle the um, bottom and effectively the top borders. But if you switch from 25 line mode, 20, yeah, to 24 line or 24 row mode, rather character row mode, at the right position, you basically trick the VIC chip into not enabling the border at the correct position. And then when you switch it back to 25 row mode, again, character row mode, then the border comes back on again the next time round, but then you you delay the VIC, you trick the VIC into not switching off the border at the right time again, and you keep on having the border switched off. So that's, you know, it's a very simple border off effect. The next part of this simple demo waits to uh, do a technique where we are wanting to get a stable stable execution or stable stabilize the raster beam. So what we're doing is that we're setting up or we're waiting for a particular raster line and then we're setting up a an interrupt. 
to trigger uh, on the next raster line by doing an inc d012. And then the main line executes these no ops until the raster line interrupt comes along and precisely within two cycles because we're executing a whole bunch of no op instructions which are two cycles each. It then enters this IRQ, this interrupt, this raster interrupt. We do a little bit of a delay and we stabilize the end of the execution for the raster line by loading the current raster beam position and then comparing it with the raster beam position in the next few cycles. And then if it's um, equal or not equal, it wastes one more cycle. And that gives us a nice stabilized raster interrupt, precisely down, stabilized down to precisely this and an exact cycle. So we don't have a two cycle or a three cycle or a four cycle wobble anymore due to any previous executed instructions. We have a precisely stabilized execution for this IRQ. Once we have a perfectly stabilized uh, raster IRQ, then we can do some precisely timed uh, raster interrupt based effects. And one of these effects that we can do, uh, we could do some vertical color bars, for example, um, but we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is that we are going to precisely switch the uh, ghost bite at the beginning of where the multicolored sprites are rendered and then make the ghost bite display completely black again at the end of where the multicolored sprites are being drawn. So here we advance through the raster line schedule and we're wasting a few lines here. And these few lines, these this increment 0401, the increment 0402, it's just incrementing the characters that you can see animating in the top left hand corner of the screen. It's just to really give a good indicator of where these increment, the INC instructions, begin executing in terms of the raster beam schedule. And in between, I'm just padding it with a whole bunch of no op instructions. Each of these increment instructions is basically timed to start at the same cycle count inside the raster line. So cycle 16 or one zero in hex is where these incre increment instructions should always trigger on subsequent raster lines. And then depending on what's going on in the raster line, depending on what instructions are being executed and depending on how many sprites there are active, because sprites displayed by the VIC chip steal cycles from the CPU. Um, depending on all of this, we waste or we do a, we execute a different number of no ops to maintain the synchronization on a raster line by raster line basis for where we execute our code. And then we get to this point, which is where the multicolored sprites start drawing. And as soon as the multicolored sprites start drawing, I set a bit pattern in the ghost byte, which is at 3FFF there. And then I do some no ops, and then I store X back into 3FFF, and X is solid black, X is FF or 255 or eight ones, which is solid black. And if you store anything else, which has uh, transparent pixels, zero value pixels, which are transparent, then it shows the background color, which in this case is the screen. And the screen that we can see in the debugger is, it was yellow and now it's blue. So that's where those yellow pixels come from those yellow pixels show through the transparent blocky edges or blocky corners, if you like, of the expanded multicolored sprites. But because the expanded multicolored sprites with the transparent area can either show black from the ghost bite or the background, the screen color effectively. So it can either show black, which is a one value in the ghost byte or a zero value in the ghost byte for that pixel displays the background color, the screen color. So you have a choice of two colors that you can show in the transparent multicolored pixels. And because 
at all other points in the raster line schedule, the ghost bite is all black. It's all opaque. Then the high resolution sprites, which are, that are basically displaying over the top of the black opaque ghost bite. So if I go to the sprite data, which is at 200 in hex, Okay, so at 200 in hex is the uh, memory for both of the sprites. Uh, so if I fill uh, the memory at 200 all the way up to um, 27F, right, which is enough data for two sprites. So we have the high resolution sprite, we have the multicolored sprite. So if I fill uh, 200 to 27F, which is um, eight zero bytes in total, um, each sprite is four zero in hex bytes. So we fill this memory. If I fill it with zero, that will uh, get rid of all of the sprites. The sprite cycle timings from the VIC will still be there because it doesn't care if it's fetching transparent or non-transparent values from the memory. It still takes the cycles to, to steal those cycles from the CPU for accessing the memory. Right? But we can see that the sprites are now basically all transparent and you can see the yellow pixels that come from the ghost byte updates now the the sprites were very uh, specifically created so that uh, there are four pixels or four high resolution pixels but uh, two multicolored pixels or basically one multicolor horizontally expanded uh, pixel on the left hand side of the ghost byte and then four pixels, high resolution pixels, on the right hand side of the ghost byte. That's why the ghost byte uh, display there is uh, symmetrical uh, in terms of the uh, X symmetry, as well as the Y symmetry, but the, it's the X symmetry which is important for us because the transparent pixel is either grouped to the left hand side or the right hand side of that ghost byte. So that's how we can get two different because the, the left four pixels and the right four pixels of the, of the ghost byte are displayed for the left hand slope and the right hand slope, the down left and the down right slope. So that's what this source code does. And we, we've stepped through this code already, the disassembly in the uh, C64 debug GUI, but this is just basically what the source code is. Of course, I will be uh, committing this source code to GitHub, and I will put a link to the GitHub repository for this source code in the video description below, so you can see, and you can have a look through the source code yourself to see what it's doing. Uh, I've tried to comment it and make it as descriptive as possible. I'm using uh, a whole bunch of macros with uh, full textual uh, wordy descriptions for the VIC chip registers and everything else. So hopefully it's understandable what this very simple uh, 10 sprites in the border uh, technical demo is uh, trying to show. And I hope you find it useful and I hope it helps uh, clear up any remaining questions about what the nine demo was doing with regards to the ghost bike updates in the border with respect to where the transparent pixels are. You can see here that these it looks like uh, four sprites next to each other, right? But those four sprites next to each other are basically two sprites which are duplicated in the multicolored sprites. So you can see that the horizontally expanded sprites, uh, those two sprites side by side in the horizontally expanded sprites basically work out to be the same width as non-expanded higher resolution sprites. So that's where the trick is, is that the, that the transparent pixels in the corners of those multicolor sprites just get basically filled in by the background color or the ghost bite. And the ghost bite changes to just time. So thank you very much for watching. Take care, have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.